Woche. Congressman Paul, I've heard him now in many debates talking about bringing our troops home and about the war in Iraq and how it's failed. And uh, I want to tell you that that kind of isolationism, sir, is what caused World War II. You allowed Hit Hitler to come to power with that kind of attitude of isolationism and appeasement. Okay. You, you know, it's uh, rather ironic that uh, he would call me an isolationist because in, in many ways we have drifted into a neo-isolationism because we have less friends now around the world than ever before, a lot more enemies, and we go it alone. And it's because we've accepted this principle of starting the wars, preemptive wars. So uh, it's, uh, it's rather sad, uh, and yet our policy, which means that we would bring our military back and open up the doors and talk to people and trade with them and remove sanctions, I think there would be so many positive things come from that, and uh, we would not be isolationist we would be very much engaged in the world. I just finished having Thanksgiving with the troops, and their message to you is, the message of these brave men and women who are serving over there is, let us win, let us win. He's approaching it uh, emotionally. Uh, he has so much invested, the war he's invested in. Uh, he has a misunderstanding of foreign policy. I, I don't think he has the vaguest idea about what the founders taught, how beneficial it is to have a non-interventionist foreign policy. He uses the cliche of isolationism, and that is not what it is. And, uh, and he really hasn't studied on all the blowback that the CIA has taught us and that we have suffered from, all the unintended consequences. If one is, becomes aware of the downside of this policy, they would change their mind unless they're too emotionally involved, they dig in their heels, and uh, they're just incapable of, uh, of changing their position. The uh, real question you have to ask uh, is, why do I get the most money from active duty officers, military personnel? So what John is saying is just totally distorted. He doesn't even understand the difference between non-intervention and isolationism. I want to trade with people, talk with people, travel, but I Time don't up, want to send our troops overseas using force to tell them how to live. We would object to it here, and they're going to object to us over there. Staying on this issue, let's watch. Hello, my name is Buzz Brockway from Lawrenceville, Georgia. All the talk about the war in Iraq centers around how quickly we can get out. I think that's the wrong question. We need to make a permanent or long-term military commitment to the region. By staying in Iraq, we provide long-term stability to the region. We provide support for our allies, and we act as a deterrent to the troublemakers in the region. Which presidential candidate will make a permanent or long-term military commitment to the people of Iraq? The best commitment we can make to the Iraqi people is to give them their country back. That's the most important thing that we can do. Already, already part of their country has been taken back. In the South, they claim the surge has worked, but the surge really hasn't worked. There's less violence, but El Sadr has essentially won in the South. The British are leaving. The brigade of El Sadr now is in charge, so they are getting their country back. So let the people have their country back again. Just think of the, the cleaning up of the mess after we left Vietnam. Vietnam now is a friend of ours. We trade with them. The president comes here. What we achieved in peace was unachievable in 20 years of the French and the Americans being in Vietnam, so it's time for us to take care of America first. Senator McCain. 
30 seconds. Well, let me, let me remind you, Congressman, we never lost a battle in Vietnam. It was American public opinion that forced us to lose that conflict. Shortly after the Vietnam War ended, Colonel Tu and Colonel Summers met, and they were talking about this. And our uh, and, and the American colonel said, "You know, we never lost one battle." And Colonel Tu, the Vietnamese, says, "Yes, but that's irrelevant." And it is irrelevant. But we have to realize why they want to come here. Wolfowitz even admitted that one of the major reasons that the Al-Qaeda was organized and energized was because of our military base in Saudi Arabia. He says, oh, now we can take the base away. He understood why they came here. They come here because we're occupying their country, just as we would object if they occupied our country. And I think it's important for all Americans to understand the fundamental difference. After we left Vietnam, they didn't want to follow us home. They wanted to build their own workers' paradise. If you read Zarqawi, if you read bin Laden, if you read Zawahiri, read what they say. They want to follow us home. They want Iraq to be a base for Al-Qaeda to launch attacks against the United States. Their ultimate destination is not Iraq. Their ultimate destination is New York City, Washington, okay. D.C., awesome. Chicago, and Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. This is a transcendent challenge of our time. I believe that we can meet it, and we will defeat it. He uh, does not understand any theory about foreign policy, and it would be good for him to read Robert Pape's book, uh, Dying to Win, uh, which demonstrates so clearly why people are willing to uh, commit suicide and come here and bomb us. And he was very astute in doing all his investigation and proved, to me at least, that uh, occupation is the real reason and religion may play a part, but it is not the reason. Radical Islam is not the reason. If it were so, they would be wanting to attack other countries. They do not come to hit us here in this country because we're free and rich. They come after us because we're in their country, occupying their territory, and as far as they can see, we're trying to impose our Western style on them, and we're trying to steal their oil. Under those conditions, you can't ever expect all of the Muslims to be forgiving and treat us as if we have never done them any harm. Let's go to the next question. It's for Ron Paul. Mark Strauss, Davenport, Iowa. This question is for Ron Paul. Mr. Paul, I think we both know that the Republican Party is never going to give you the nomination. But I'm hoping that you're crazy like a fox like that and you're using this exposure to propel yourself into an independent run. My question is for Ron Paul. Mr. Paul, are you going to let America down by not running as an independent? Thank you. Now, now that's what I call a tough question, <laughs> because I have no intention of doing this. I am a Republican. I have won 10 times as a Republican, and we're doing quite well. We had 5,000 people show up at a rally in front of the Independence Hall with blacks and, in, and, and Hispanics and a cross-section of this country. Do you know that we raised $4.3 million in one day? Without without spending one cent. We didn't even pay an individual to go out and they weren't professional fundraisers. It came in here, it was automatic. We're struggling to figure out how to spend the money. This country is in a revolution. They're sick and tired of what they're getting and I happen to be lucky enough to be part of it. I'll take that.